Yeah, I can, but some. My name is Sintani from uh, Kendall. I just want to uh, uh, state on the point that previous government and this government treat the refugees very unkindly. Um, we have spent our money, our national financial assets uh, on, on overseas, other, where, where the uh, refugees are kept. Uh, I think it's a time uh, we should stop blaming on the people smugglers and be more compassionate towards the refugees. Because not all refugees are bad or uneducated. So I know the Greens have a good uh, reason for looking after refugees. We have a question. <laughs> yeah. So what would you like to address both Labour and yeah, refugees. Thank you. Thank you for you for the question. Uh, this has been covered earlier in the night, and, and I'll state again: uh, I'm as compassionate about overseas people as I am about Australia. But I'm, I'm, I put Australia's first, and, and we need to address the issue here. I understand we have plenty of plenty of immigrants who have come here in the past and have, have put massive will and, and great work ethic and everything else into Australia. Um, and without any disrespect, over the last 10 years, the immigrants who have come to Australia, or the refugees in a combination, 90% of those are still on welfare. So that's... That, well, well that's, that's what... That's what I've read and been told. I have so, been a refugee, I never think I, 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 Again, like I said, I, I put Australians first, and I think we need to do that. And if we get we get that, our backyard in order, I'm happy to get have rid a discussion. Of the white fellas from here? Happy to have a discussion about uh, people from overseas and refugees again. Thank you. So I've only got a minute, starting now. Yeah, okay. yeah well look, uh, it, it's a very vexing question. Uh, what we, you've got to remember, we do have a strong policy on refugees. Uh, we accept 13 human, uh, 13, over 13,500 humanitarian uh, and refugee visas that we deem to meet the criteria. We've agreed to um, another tranche of uh, Syrian refugees um, because of the trouble there, Syrian and uh, Jordan, from Syria and Jordan. Um, our situation in the not so recent past, we had 800 boats uh, with people crammed onto these leaky boats. We had 1,200 deaths at sea. The um, people smugglers were choosing who would come to Australia, uh, whereas now that we have control of our borders, we're choosing, we go to the refugee camps. Um, it's not someone with the most money yes, uh, who gets, gets chosen. Uh, we have a very generous uh, deal. If people come here, um, they then get a, as a, as a uh, uh, person who comes, comes as a refugee, chosen in that process, um, they get all assistance, education, health, the same social security benefits of us, they get a resident visa. If some of the other people that have arrived during that period when it was all out of control, uh, they have temporary protection visas which allows them to work, it goes for four years. If you want to go to the country, you can get a, a safe haven enterprise visa, a chef, and at the end of four years, you can then join the, the standard pathway. But our strong policy means that we're in control of um, getting refugees here. And if we hadn't got control, we wouldn't be able to be helping the people in Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, the old Syria and Jordan in the current Syrian crisis, because we wouldn't be able to. questions tonight, but um, this one I'm quite um, happy to answer. 
So there's a lot of misconception and misinformation around the whole refugee situation. And I remember when we had young doctors coming through our house staying with us as registrars, quite a lot of them were the Vietnam um, refugees, boat people, who would tell our kids stories about what it was like to be on a boat that where people were dying and drowning, etc., etc. So this has been going on for some time. Transnational migration through climate change issues is going to get worse. If we don't, as a society, have a really mature discussion about what we're going to do about refugees, we're going to be lost. Syria started with a major drought due to climate change, which created and embellished more into a civil war. So they can't go back there, their places are trashed. We really need to sit down and work this out civilly and not have misinformation and three word slogans like stop the boats, etc, etc. No one wants anybody to drown at sea. And secondly, Nauru and Manus Island. I'd say a third of the people here, pretend you're the ones on Nauru and Manus and there are women being raped, there are people killing themselves. It is a despicable place to be. Both Labor and Liberal support this. And this third here, you're all displaced people and you're jumping on a boat, you don't know if you're even going to get there alive, but you're so desperate you want to come to Australia because look at us, look where you live, it's wonderful. Do we feel good about that? Yes. We do? Well, I think that's really sad. That's why we need to have a much more mature conversation about where we're going with our refugee policy. And look on the website, the Greens have got a really comprehensive refugee policy. Peter's going to make No, no, no. We no, see no, the no. billion spent on the refugees, which I've got no problem with, but we see the, uh, the homeless, we see ads on TV every night, give money, do this, do that for the homeless people. Let's change our taxation laws. We're, we're going to move on to, uh, to Peter. We're going to have, uh, at the end, they'll just all have two minutes each to sum up, and uh, then I'm sure they might hang around and might have gentle conversations. <laughs> <laughs> a great question, Tim, but I want to challenge one of the assertions in the question. One of the assertions in the question was you were wondering if we'd gone too, too hard on oppressing, you know, people smugglers at the risk of, of, of being, of not being compassionate enough, I think, was the, to, to refugees, I think, was the assertion of the question. These two are not exclusive. You can, we, we can be hard on people smugglers, and we should be hard on people smugglers, uh, but that does not mean that we should not be compassionate on refugees. These are, these are separate issues. Labor's policy is basically a four-pronged policy, and that is that we will keep the sea route closed. We don't want people to die at sea. We will, we will do what is necessary, and, if it, and, and even if it is safe to do so, we will turn back boats, okay? So our policy is firm on that. Okay, we, we, we're, as, as far as that goes, we're adopting the same policy as the, as the Liberal Nationals. However, there are three, that, that's, that's the hard part, you know, that's the, the tough part, and that's important. The, the, there are three compassionate parts, though. One, one is that uh, those who are in our care, uh, we, we're not, we're, we are going to make sure that there is proper oversight of, of those people. That there is that there is uh, international oversight of that. Uh, if, if anybody watched Q and A, you know, Bill Shorten said, "Look, you know, we'll open up, we'll open it up to reporters. We've got, you know, we shouldn't have anything to hide uh, in, in terms of the way that uh, that refugees are, are, are dealt with and asylum seekers are dealt with. That's what we need to get. We're going to uh, we're going to change the Migration Act to allow UN UNHCR oversight of of our refugee centres and we're going to appoint a ch children's advocate and I do want to get on to my other two points which I will do very quickly. We'll spend $450 million establishing uh, refugee processing centres in the transit countries like Indonesia etc so that people can be processed you know, without the need of having to get onto boats. And more importantly, we're going to win, uh, and not more importantly, <laughs> just, just as importantly, point number four is uh, we're also going to increase the refugee intake from the 13,750 it is now, humanitarian intake, up to 20,000 initially, and then up to 27,000 by 2025, I think it is. We don't want that. Okay? We don't want that. 
Uh, I'm going to say, uh, if you can begin to think about your two-minute sum-up. Uh, you can't say much in two minutes, I know, but I'll give you two minutes, and I'm going to be, well, stricter than I have been. Uh, so, but we'll go for it with one more question, uh, and this is a very, very good one. I think we've got voting here, is this one that's the most interesting? I'd just like to ask all candidates, what is their policy on private health insurance increases? The reason I've turned around and asked this is, the government increased the private health insurance, they give them permission to increase it, and straight away a little office up at Port Macquarie closed down and put out people who were working there and the pensions of this area now have got nowhere to turn around and go to sit down and speak to these people who run the health insurance face to face. They turn around and give you a website. If you haven't got a computer, well, what do you do? You get to get on the phone. And you get on the phone and it lasts 30 minutes, you're on the phone and then you get someone who doesn't understand what you're talking. Have you candidates got any policies on increases in private health insurance? Thank you. Short and sweet, in a rich country like Australia, if we had fair taxation, good taxation that didn't reward the corporates over the ordinary people, the economy is to serve the people, not the people serve the economy. And health is a fundamental human right that you shouldn't have to pay private health insurance for. Yeah, the people don't have to pay health insurance. We have a Medicare system, we have a public health system, but people choose to, to have health insurance because uh, waiting lists and because they want to have choice and a bit of control of their life. Uh, we in the coalition are very concerned about the increases because they've been above CPI, but 95% of the premiums get paid out. There are some structural things in the way the system is set up that we can save up to 800 billion. At the moment, there is a very regulated system dictating what the ticket price of all the prosthetics that go in. And uh, there is an arbitrage there by some private hospitals. And uh, what happens is there's a real market price for hips or knees or other bits of plastic or false bits that get put inside you in these operations. Um, but they're regulated and a lot of private hospitals um, are paying five, six times more than what the market price is. And we've estimated that you could save $800 million, which would mean premiums would actually not be going up like that. For one year, they might actually stay there or go back because that's a huge payout. Um, there's lots of other ways we would like to make it more um, efficacious. Uh, but that's the most obvious one that we're trying to address, and also the community rating principle. It doesn't help me if I can't speak to someone. Well, yeah, well, look, I can make representatives at HCF that left, or... Uh, Boomer. 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 yeah. Yeah, well, look, I can make a representation for the community because we've got 55% of the electorate to have health insurance. It is a big issue. Just briefly, on, on the uh, situation of not getting through or not, not having a computer and then getting through on the phone, I've found that in the last few months with different things with insurance and, and other aspects and, and Telstra, etc. I find that absolutely incredibly frustrating. and It's, it's become that common now. Um, I think government probably should have a look at that, that situation itself. As far as a policy on, on the private health insurance, I haven't got a policy, um, but I'm, I'm happy to talk to you, any concerns my constituents have, um, if I don't know exactly what they're talking about, I'm happy to meet you and have that discussion and take that to the table. And that's, that's my job, I'm happy to do that.
I'm not aware of any policy changes that we're proposing with regard to with, with regard to private health. It is as uh, Dr. Gillespie pointed out, it is a, it is a regulated industry, um, and uh, and certainly, um, you know, I, I would be uh, you know wanting wanting to make sure that uh, you know that, that prices are kept down as as much as is possible. I mean, it's obviously you know kind of balancing. You know, service provision against costs and things like that. So it's certainly something I'd, I'd keep a close eye on. Um, on the the other issue, um, yes, I'm I'm very concerned that there are so many so many government services these days, um, and 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 private services even. You know, where 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 people who don't use the internet, uh, who can't look up things, or for for a whole range of different reasons. Um, uh, you know, uh, are, are effectively discriminated against. I was speaking to somebody in Bulladeela today who, you know, you, you pay three dollars extra, I think, if you pay your Telstra bill over uh, at the post office counter instead of doing it over the internet. I mean, these, you know, there's a whole series of things like this that it, that is just appalling that that, that that this sort of thing continues. And 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 look, we do need to to, to have a very close look at all government services. And and maybe even maybe even look at things like the Competition and Consumer Act, uh, you know, to see, you know, whether we can put in place minimum service levels for for, for various sorts of organisations, and particularly things like health insurance. Yeah. Thank you. Uh,